My name is Elijah Armola, and today we're going to be installing the ServiceNow extension for Visual Studio Code. First things first here, we're going to want to go ahead and navigate to Visual Studio and open up the extensions menu. We can search for ServiceNow. A few items down, we should see ServiceNow extension for VS Code. We can expand that. Should be able to see it from the search menu. We'll go ahead and click install. Once it finishes installing, you'll want to open up the palette menu on a Mac. It's command shift P. If you're on windows, it's control shift P. We'll want to use now activate now extension. Should activate pretty quickly. Once it's done, you'll want to go down in the bottom left hand corner and click set up workspace. I already have a folder on my desktop for this. Go ahead and click it and select project folder. Once that finishes, you should see create project in the bottom left hand corner as well. It's going to need a few pieces of information from you. First is your environment URL and then a username and password to authenticate if you're going to use basic authentication. So I'm going to navigate to my PDI here and copy my URL. Go back into VS Code, paste it in. And again, there's three different types of authentication. I'm going to be using basic for this. Enter in my username. Perfect. So once we're authenticated here, we have to go ahead and select a project type. So we can do store applications or custom applications. I have a custom app that I've already created in my PDI for this. Go ahead and click custom apps. And then we can click import existing. And this is an employee request custom application that I already have configured on my PDI. So go ahead and click this. And then these are the different types of file types that we want to pull into our workspace. I'll click OK. And it's going to go ahead and download all those here. So you can see underneath my project folder, we have employee request. And then we have a few different uh, folders here that get created, background scripts, scratch, and source. And there's some other folders deep down in this hierarchy. So now that we have it set up, one of the cool features that you can use this for is to edit code directly from your instance and then sync it back with your environment. So we can open up our command palette again. We can do a command shift P on a Mac or control shift P on a Windows computer. We can type now colon and we can also see all the different types of things that we can do from our command palette. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and create a new file and we're going to create a script include. And for this one, we'll just create a uh, my request utils file. Once we click OK, we get our boilerplate script include code, which is good. It's exactly what we want. And from here, we'll just create a dummy function just for the test. We'll call it test log. We can say, we'll just go ahead and log. It worked. I'll go ahead and save this file. And so from here, we have it saved locally, but it hasn't synced with our environment. So we have two options at this point. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see sync file and sync project. If we wanna sync our entire project in custom app, we can do that, or we can just sync the single file. Um, going back to the command palette, you can also do it from here as well. So we can search now, sync, and same thing, we get current file or current project. So we'll go ahead and click sync current file. So this thing says it was complete. So we're gonna go ahead and navigate to our script includes module within our instance. And we can see right there, my request utils and it was created just now. So one other cool thing that you can do with this, um, we'll create another function is, we'll just call this test log two. We can create changes in our environment and then sync them back locally as well. So we'll go ahead and create this change and we'll save it. We'll navigate back over to our Visual Studio code. And we can, we can see here, we don't have our second function. We just have our initial test log function that was created. So we'll go ahead and click sync file one more time. And it actually pulls in those changes that we created inside of our ServiceNow environment. Another thing that we can do from here is we can actually look up files. So say you don't want to create a script include or a client script directly from Visual Studio, but you already have a file in your custom app that you want to edit. You can also just look that up. So we'll open up our command palette again, command shift B. We'll search now global file search and we'll click enter. 
And then from here, we can search for different files and pull them up. So we'll go ahead and go back into our script includes. And this will pull back a list of all the script includes that are inside of our environment. So from here, we can pull any one of these script includes directly into our instance here, and we could edit them directly if we wanted to. We'll go ahead and click on call rotation, click OK, just for the sake of this example. And so it pulls our code directly into our environment. Another thing that you can do directly from Visual Studio Code is select the update set that you want to work out of. So we'll go ahead and open up our command palette again. And we can look for select application update set. So in this case, we only have our default one, but if you had more than one in here, you can specify directly where you wanna make the changes from in VS Code. And we see here that our change update set to default. Another cool feature of VS Code is how it manages conflicts with the same file. So we have the most updated version of our my request util script in VS Code, but let's say that we go to our environment and we'll just go ahead here and delete these two test logs. Let's go ahead and save it. We have our empty script include. Let's navigate back to VS Code. And now let's just try to sync the file one more time. Since we didn't have the most recent version when we attempted to sync this time, there's a conflict. So what we can do is we can open the conflict here and it'll give us a breakdown of what the problem is. So we see here that the local file in our environment, it doesn't have any of the code here on the left, but on the local version, we have our two log statements. From here, we can go back up to the top and click sync current file again and it'll give us an option. So we can overwrite the server or we can overwrite the local file. So in this case, we'll go ahead and overwrite the server file so that we still have all that code. And so we see here, overwriting my request utils in the server. And if we go back to our server file, we can see that it was updated and it has the most recent local version. One other really cool feature of this extension is the ability to run background scripts directly from your code editor. So in our file hierarchy here, we see background scripts and script.js. We'll go ahead and click on that. And then from here, we can directly write code and then test it in our environment without ever having to navigate back. So we'll just do a quick log statement here. Hello world. And then we can click the run button up here in the top right. And we get our print statement right here. And this isn't just limited to, you know, log statements or anything like that. Anything that you would normally run in a background script, queries, checking data, anything like that, you can do directly from VS Code. So I hope you found this quick tutorial helpful. If you wanna learn more about it, you can navigate to the ServiceNow documentation and it'll provide all the features and functions of this extension. Go ahead and open this up really quick. But if you go to docs.servicenow.com, you can search for the ServiceNow extensions for Visual Studio Code. And from here, it'll give you a quick overview of all of what you're able to do with this extension. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Thank you.